Genesis chapter 39 verse 2 says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And what I want to preach on is the subject of white privilege. Why am I preaching on white privilege when you don't commonly hear this preached about? Because when people believe in white privilege, nobody wins. White people walk around feeling guilty for no reason, and minorities walk around feeling like victims who are helpless for no reason. And this sermon is meant to be empowering by letting you know that white privilege is a myth. According to scripture, if you have God's blessing on your life, you can succeed regardless of what prejudice you may face or regardless of what your skin color is. Look at what the scripture says here. It says, and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. What made Joseph so prosperous? The Lord was with him. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter what your skin color is. If God's blessing is on your life, you will succeed. That's why what matters is not forming some coalition based on your race, forming some support group for your skin color. What matters is having God's blessing on your life, and that is how you succeed in this world. The Bible says righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. If you want your nation to be lifted up, get that sin out of your nation. Get God's blessing on your nation. God sent Jonah to preach to the Ninevites so that they could get the sin out of their nation so that God could bless them and withhold his wrath from them. And what happened? They listened to Jonah's preaching and they got the sin out of their lives and God started blessing them. The same applies today. People like to say, but this is a special issue. The Bible doesn't cover this. Do you know that Joseph was a slave in the Egyptians land? Do you know that Joseph was a different ethnicity than the Egyptians? Because Joseph actually faced discrimination. Let's go to Genesis chapter 43, because there's no subject that the Bible doesn't touch. Genesis chapter 43, it says in verse 32, listen to this. And they set on for him by himself, and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians, which did eat with him by themselves. So the Egyptians did not even eat with Joseph. They ate with him by themselves, meaning they were in the same room, but in a separate section of the room. Listen to this next part of Genesis chapter 44, verse 33. I'm sorry, verse 32. It says, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. The Egyptians did not even want to eat bread with the Hebrews. There was the Hebrews only section over here, and then there was the Egyptian section only over there. So doesn't that sound a lot like segregation? They had segregation in the Bible, folks. Joseph was in Hebrew sold into slavery, living in a segregated time. And despite that, he served God and kept God's blessing on his life. And that's why he ended up in charge in Egypt. He ended up in leadership in Egypt. How? Was it by feeling sorry for himself and begging the Egyptian government to give him money because he was the wrong skin color? No, it was by serving God. Listen, what matters are the choices you make and whether or not God's blessing is on your nation. In Psalm 144, it puts it this way. A lot of people overlook this factor. In Psalm 144, it puts it this way. It says in verse 15, happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Look, it doesn't matter what skin color you are. If God is your Lord, if you're putting God first, God will bless you. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you're seeking God, if God's blessing is on your life, you can be white as snow, you can be dark as night, God will bless you because you are putting him first. And there are some people that will not listen to this message if it comes from a white person. So let this Native American right here, who part of my ethnic background is Mexican, part of my ethnic background is mulatto. But I have observed that when I serve God, God's blessing is on my life, despite the fact that I am not white. I grew up in a situation that was far less than ideal. My father was not active in the home and my mother was neglectful and abusive. But despite that, as an adult, I decided I was gonna do it God's way. Am I perfect? No. But you know what? My wife and children have a lot more going for them than what I had going for me when I was growing up because of the fact that I chose to do it God's way. I sought the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And we, are, we don't have a lot. We're not even middle class. 
but God is blessing us. My children are a lot smarter, stronger, and more spiritual than I was when I was a child because I chose to go God's way and now they are inheriting that blessing. You want your children to inherit privilege? Here's how you do it. Number one, get your children saved. Because if, if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You want the promise of eternal life? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You want your children to inherit the promise of eternal life? Give them the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach them the gospel so they can be saved. But in terms of this earthly life, if you want God's blessing on your children's lives, teach them how to live godly. Teach your children to serve God from an early age. They will have God's blessing on their life. Now, a lot of you think, oh, well, that's not going to fix my daily problems. But, but listen to me now. What would you rather have? The government feeling sorry for you and giving you money or a father in the home or a stable family situation which one is going to get you further obviously the second one don't you know that if you live a life where you're just sleeping around and not taking things and you're not married you're not taking things seriously you're just sleeping around having a bunch of children out of wedlock those children growing up without a father in the home are more likely to end up in the criminal justice system, more likely to commit violent crime, more likely to go into a life of drugs. Why? Because the father wasn't in the home. The Bible says, ye fathers, provoke not your children unto wrath, but bring them up, bring them up, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. It is a command of scripture that a father is active in his children's life, that a father is raising his children, that a father is in the home. When the father is not in the home, that's what raises the probability of those things happening. So it's not about what color you are, it's about the choices that you make. If you want your children to inherit privilege, number one, get them saved. Number two, teach them to serve God. And number three, be active in their lives. And that will give them all the privilege they need to succeed because look what first peter chapter 2 says about we the believers you see here's the thing even though i am of native american ancestry i don't put my ethnicity first i put god first because somebody who's the same skin color as me someone whose skin is just as red or reddish brown as mine if they don't believe in christ they are not my brother they are not my sister because what makes you someone's part of someone's nation is your spiritual nation. First Peter chapter two, nine says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I exercise my Christian privilege. I exercise my saved privilege. I exercise my child of God privilege by preaching the gospel to the lost by preaching the word of God to people, by letting people know that the Lord Jesus Christ has died on the cross for them, that he rose from the dead for them, and that if they would only put their trust in him, they can be saved. And then once that person gets saved, opening up the rest of scripture to show them how they might live a godly life and please the Lord. That's how I show forth the praises of him who hath called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Listen to this part, 1 Peter 2. Verse 10, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You see, we are God's children. We are a royal priesthood. That's, you're royal. If you're saved, you're royalty. That's privilege. If you're saved, you're a priesthood. That's privilege. If you're saved, you can show forth the praises of God who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is privilege. But you know another way to exercise that privilege? 1 Peter 2, 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Serve God, live a godly life, and God can bless you. Because what matters is not your physical nation, but your spiritual nation. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God bless.